In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis and quoting Congressman Tom Emmer. I'd like to report the SEC chairman for regulation by harassment. Hashtag fire Gary Gensler. Amen to that. And quoting the high priest of Bitcoin, Max Kaiser, off the back of the news that Germany has officially dumped all their Bitcoin holdings. El Salvador now has more Bitcoin than Germany. Europe is dying. Central and South America are the future. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin bottom signal. Is it in? as the German government runs out of the BTC to sell, as well as Genesis labeled address move 720 milli, where the Bitcoin to Coinbase pointing to start of asset liquidations. We'll also be sharing Bitcoin institutional investors add 100,000 BTC in one week, as well as crypto trading volume to exceed 108 trillion this year in 2024 with Europe currently in the lead. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin price will smash $330,000 per coin this bull cycle. According to this analyst, I'll be breaking down the timeline. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. Oh my gosh, it's finally almost here. JV is going to talk to us. Crypto news is near. I can't stand waiting. There is no debating. I waited all day. Maybe I need a life. But Bitcoin is all I can think about day and night. Hurry, JV. Not often I sing along, eh? But uh, welcome everyone to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. But without further ado, please do pump the likes. It helps out tremendously with the algorithm. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Turn on all notifications and please, please repost this over on X. Today is pod episode number 1698. I'm your host, JV. It's July 12, 2024, TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. The market is in the green. Let's see if we can hold. Currently above 57.5, family. Let's kick it off with our market watch, as we do each and every day. So yeah, Bitcoin, Ether, Solana, XRP, Cardano, all in the green right now. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, we got 61 billion worth of crypto volume in the past 24 hours. The Bitcoin dominance sitting strong at 53.5%. Ether dominance... 17.6%. There are currently over 2.4 million cryptocurrencies listed on CoinMarketCap, which is always mind-boggling to think of. There are 790 crypto exchanges, so there is no shortage of crypto exchanges. Let me know your favorite crypto exchange in the comments, family. It'd be interesting uh, to note. And it's about to give us the data on the total collective crypto market cap, which I am patiently awaiting because the crypto or uh, coin market cap made this update where it makes you wait like an idiot versus just give you all the data. But anyways, the crypto market cap is 2.14 trillion. That's why I wanted to know. So the Bitcoin market cap itself is almost one and a half. No, I'm sorry. 1.1 trillion right now. 1.136 to be more precise. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours. We got Ordi. We got Maker. And XRP up 5% of the day, which is a pretty big rarity uh, for the XRP army. But anyways, below that, we have Cardano, Ronin, Lido Dow, Ave, Bitcoin Cash, Near Protocol, and Ondo. And yes, JV is on caffeine today. I drank a cup of coffee. Speaking a little faster than normal, more than likely. I'm just uh, guessing here, speculating. But nonetheless, checking out the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. The majority of the crypto is finally back in the green, but this is just on the daily. They say, when in doubt, zoom out. And on the monthly, yikes, uh, roughly 96% of the market bleeding wreck city. You already know. Now check out the Crypto Green and Fear Index today. Finally, extreme fear. This is what I've been waiting for. Most likely in extreme fear, we get a big pump. So this may be a bottom signal family. Uh, yesterday was a 29. Last week a 29 and last month a 72. In greed. Uh, so there you go, crypto bros. Uh, yeah, let's kick it off with our, we did the market watch. So let's go next to our Bitcoin technical analysis, aka astrology for the broskies. We'll even look at some of the live chart action and I'll let you know the latest formations of what's popping. This headline reads, key Bitcoin price levels emerge as Bitcoin hits 50 AGs on sticky US PPI. 
That's right. Bitcoin smashed 58 Gs this morning around the July 12th Wall Street Open as markets reacted to the sticky United States inflation data. And here you're looking at the one hour chart. Uh, trading view showed Bitcoin price strength improving as the producer price index print for June rose more than forecasted. Year on year PPI came in at 2.6% versus 2.3 expected, 0.1% higher than the month prior, quoting the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. On an adjusted basis, the index for final demand rose 2.6% for the 12 months ended in June, the largest advance since moving up 2.7% for the 12 months ended March 2023, as outlined here. And while the opposite of July 11 CPI numbers, Bitcoin avoided a downturn on the PPI release, modestly gaining in line with U.S. stocks while dollar strength tumbled. Wah, wah. But anyways, quoting Sku, so overall PPI is sticky, yo, on a year-on-year -year basis, if not higher due to the higher prices and lack of supply. Increasing energy, food, and trade services prices is not a great look. Sku noted that bearing energy, food, and trade services, the index was basically flat and less of a surprise to the markets, quoting him here. Initial reaction was the DXY, which is the U.S. dollar currency index, and yields up before lower. This tells me the market market is transitioning into expecting a harsh reality when demand continues to buckle. Now, the NQ and ES likely recovering here with hedges coming off end of the day performance will be important. And we're inching towards the end of the day. Is it not five o'clock end of the day trading market hours? Let me know because right now it's 412 family. Uh, the US dollar index was down 0.3% on July 12th, headed towards its lowest levels in over a month. Bye bye dollar. And continuing, SKU described the spot dollar book on Binance, the largest global exchange as uh, pretty healthy, quoting him here. Although order books are skewed a bid and need to see this translate into the market flows, being bid. Others also demanded a stronger statement from Bitcoin to entertain the idea of a longer term recovery, quoting crypto analyst Red Capital. There's the rebound Bitcoin needed, and the price is now challenging that higher, or sorry, that lower high resistance. And he also says Bitcoin needs to daily close above 58,350, which is the black line you can see in the chart, to break the lower high and more importantly, position itself for a rally to 60,600. The line you can see in the blue right here. On the chart, he also reiterated earlier, uh, Bitcoin attempting to break through the downward trend line, something met with rejection throughout the recent days. Now, massive shout out to Congressman Tom Emmer. I just respect this guy so much. I saw this tweet this morning and uh, I got very excited. He wrote, I'd like to report the SEC chairman for regulation by harassment. Hashtag fire Gary Gensler. If you agree with that, give me a hashtag fire GG in the live chat. And this was off the back of one of Gary's posts five hours ago. He wrote, think you've spotted something fishy in the market. Submit a tip or complaint to the SEC. And this gangster <laughs> Congressman Tom Emmer just straight up. Yeah, I'd like to report you, mofo. Regulation by harassment. Fire this no Claire gear, no hair care bear, not giving a damn about crypto. But I digress. This is coffee talking. Anyways, uh, Max also recently tweeted, El Salvador now has more biddies than Germany. Europe is a dying. Central and South America are the future. Preach. Now let's check out some of the live chart action, shall we? Here you're looking at the uh, one month chart. We're zoomed out like a mofo. And then we're going to zoom in like a mofo, mofo on mofo on mofo, blessings on blessings on blessings. But anyways, uh, here you can see overall very bullish structure. In my humble opinion, I don't pretend to be a technical analyst god, but nonetheless, um, I'm just preaching here, so feel me? But anyways, uh, we had two itty bitty red candles on the monthly, but we did have seven consecutive greens. So let's see if we can continue that momentum here uh, for the month of July. We'll see how we close. We still got three weeks left of the month. We're gonna also zoom in uh, check out the one week chart, eh? You can see on your screen. And again, this is live and in the flesh. These are live charts brought to you by TradingView via Coinbase. So the price uh, reflects the exchange Coinbase, the largest exchange here in the States. We do have a big bullish flag formation breakout, which I love to see, with a target of roughly 91, 92,000. And we do have a big target all the way up, a cup and handle at $126,450. Can you say 126,000 BTC? Because uh, that's what it's showing us. And again, this is the weekly chart. The more zoomed out we are, the more bullish it's always going to look. And as we zoom in a little further, we'll check out the one day. Yesterday, there was massive price 
action occurring uh, here. You can see we did have a few big red uh, candles, uh, you know, about a week ago, which you can see reflected. And uh, we've been trading sideways since with a little bit of a recovery. Obviously, we tap 53.5, but we do have a south target all the way at 47.7. So you also got to keep that in mind. There's always a possibility we retrace even further, but I would speculate more than half of you believe the bottom is already in from a few days ago when we tap 53.5. But let me know your thoughts and zooming in a little more. We'll check out the four hour again, live and in the flesh. You can see there's some uh, signals here. We got a top number one, a top number two, sitting at roughly 61 Gs. And then we do have a bottom target sitting all the way at 54.5. And we'll zoom in one more time for the one hour chart. And you can see what's popping here. A lot of formations. Um, overall sideways, I'd say, but you know, some action. We do have a blue target most north at 63.5. We do have a orange target at 62.1. And then we have some south targets with the most bottomest being a rising wedge formation bottom of 52,300. US dollars, AKA monopoly money, AKA tulip mania money, if you feel what I'm saying. But there you have it, family. So yeah, we did the latest uh, technical analysis, the astrology for the broskies. Now let's discuss the fact the German government has run out of biddies. Can I get a hallelujah? Thank you, God. This is pretty amazing. Uh, yes, German government officially runs out of the biddies to sell. It's a good thing. Uh, Bitcoin price may seem uh, may have seen the local bottom as the German government has run out of the Bitcoin to sell. Technical indicators point to the potential beginning of the reaccumulation phase. The German government wallet is down to just 3,800 biddies only three weeks after it started selling. As a result, the additional 222 milli worth of the selling pressure has pulled the Bitcoin price down to 60 Gs, baby, over the past week. And in fact, I got a song about that I'll play later. But anyways, signs of a potential bottom are starting to emerge. Can you notice the signs? It is the latest transfers of July 12th. Today, the wallet sent 800 BTC to Kraken, 500 BTC to wallet BC1Q and another 1,000 BTC to wallet 139P. The wallet started selling the biddies in the middle of June after it held nearly 50,000 BTC since February 2024. What a lit month. I mean, that's my favorite month, hands down. The funds are believed to have been seized from the pirate movie website operator, Movie2K. So a little uh, advice for you uh, <laughs> pirated uh, websites collecting Bitcoin. Uh, be careful out there, family. Uh, the end of the German government's Bitcoin selling could help Bitcoin find its local price bottom. For instance, the Wyckoff method points to a potential price bottom and a recovery above 60 Gs, baby, which is a massive psychological mark, according to analyst Mustache. I think we'll see Bitcoin back above 60 Gs very soon. Let me know if you agree with the analysts. Other indicators are pointing to the local price bottom, including Coinbase Premium. According to the crypto trader Marty Party, who shared the chart below in a July 11th post, the Coinbase Premium measures the price differences between Bitcoin and Coinbase, largely used by the U.S. investors and Binance. The premium signals U.S. demand for Bitcoin compared to the rest of the world. Uh, so there you have it, yo. Uh, let me know if you agree or disagree. And are you pretty excited that the German government has run out of the biddies so they can no longer continue to dump and crash and manipulate the markets? Let me know your thoughts, yo. But anyways, fam, next story of the day. Hey, uh, let's discuss this uh, 720 milli. That's right. Headline reads, Genesis labeled address moves 720 million beat worth dollars of BTC to Coinbase, pointing to start of the uh, asset liquidations. Um, so yeah, Genesis Trading label wallet transferred 12,600 Bitcoin worth 720 million during the past 30 days, mainly in transactions of 500 to 700 BTC. The address currently holds 33,356 BTC, down from over 46,000 BTC one month ago on June 12th, according to Arkham Intelligence data. The multi-million dollar Bitcoin transfers came two months after Letitia James, everyone's least favorite attorney general for the state of New York, announced that her office reached a settlement with Genesis, requiring the firm to pay $2 billion to defrauded investors involved in the Genesis Earn program. If you were impacted by that in any way, shape, or form, family, let me know in the chat. The settlement requires the funds to be returned to Genesis investors and bans the company from operating in New York, concrete jungle where dreams are made of, there's nothing we can't do. 
I digress. The Genesis trading labeled address could be preparing to start rebuying users based on the amount of the assets and the recent transfers to Coinbase. The wallet currently holds a total of $2.2 billy worth the crypto with $1.9 billy of Bitcoin as its biggest holding, followed by $364 milli worth of the Ethereum. The amount surpasses the $2 billion in digital assets that the platform was ordered to pay to defrauded investors of its earned program. And I think the reason they got defrauded is because the U.S. government cracked down on all the yield uh, receiving programs such as Gemini Earn. I guess you can blame Gary for that one too. <laughs> and on June 14th, the New York Attorney General's office announced that it recovered more than $50 million from Gemini, which will be returned to investors in the exchange's earned program. The settlement banned Gemini from operating any crypto lending program in New York State. And James, Letitia, that is, said everyone that Gemini deceived will get their money back. Gemini Trust said that affected earned users, which could expect 100% of those assets owed to them within seven days. Now, the New York Attorney General office filed a lawsuit against Genesis back October 2023 later expanding it to include the digital currency group, its CEO, Barry Silbert, who I believe has stepped down since then as the CEO and former Genesis CEO. I don't know how to pronounce that name. I'm not going to try. The lawsuit alleged that Gemini had defrauded 230,000 investors, including New York residents, oh my God, through its earned program with Genesis Global Capital and failed to disclose its risks. I wonder how many millions of people FTX defrauded with Gary Gensler, complicit in the crime. Just got to throw that out there. The NYAG also fought a lawsuit against former Celsius CEO Alex Mashinsky for allegedly hiding the platform's dire financial condition. Mashinsky, still not behind bars, I don't think, currently faces criminal charges in U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York related to securities fraud, wire fraud, and conspiracy to commit fraud, and is expected to go on trial January of 2025. So we'll see how that plays out, family. Let's now discuss uh, 100. Thousand uh, BTC added in one week uh, through the institutional FOMO like a mofo. That's right. Bitcoin institutional investors are buying the dip while Bitcoin price action circles multi-month lows. If one of the quick take blog posts shared analytics platform CryptoQuant revealed that 100,000 BTC in new purchases in one week. That's right. The Bitcoin institutional investors are not only buying, but doing so with more conviction than when Bitcoin traded near all-time highs. That is the conclusion. A CryptoQuant contributor who this week analyzed the change in wallet balance to entities between 1,000 and 10,000 BTC. These entities, which reflect institutional side of the Bitcoin investor base, have upped their exposure rapidly since the start of June. And since then, Bitcoin has fallen by up to 23%. Even last week, when Bitcoin hit, its lowest level since late February. The buying continued, with the total increase passing 100,000 BTC worth almost $6 billion, uh, quoting them here. While many novice investors capitulated last week, with special emphasis on the coins purchased between one and three months ago, institutional players made the largest accumulation process since March, yo. And in terms of the 30-day rolling balance change, the jump matches that seen during the height of the inflows in the U.S. with the Bitcoin ETFs, which yesterday was the six-month anniversary on the 11th. This time, however, ETF inflows comparatively cool. The destination for the BTC lies elsewhere. That's right. This means that unlike what we have seen in March, which was a demand more linked to the fundraising, the current institutional accumulation may indicate a true process of buying the dip in large players. That's right. While March daily inflows top 1 billion, the current day-to-day -day numbers are far smaller. Data from sources, including the United States uh, investment firm Farside, shows around 79 million for July 11th, while July 8th saw 294 million, which is the highest tally in a month. Meanwhile, only the cohorts of Bitcoin hodlers face a battle of willpower as they hold significant funds in the red. Just note, unrealized losses aren't losses unless you decide to sell at a loss. One Bitcoin is always going to be equivalent to one Bitcoin and you cannot lose what you don't sell. Keep that in mind. Short-term hodlers, including newcomer whales, face 17% in unrealized losses during the last week's trip to 53.5, which is the current bottom. The aggregate cost basis of the short-term hodler investor base defined as entities holding a given amount or unit of Bitcoin for up to 155 days sits above 64 Gs. Per calculations from on-chain analytics firm Glassnode and noted also the overall crypto market sentiment remains gloomy. I said we're back in extreme fears I shared earlier in the show. So there you go. Yo. But anyways, we discussed that. We got two more stories to share with you. Then we'll get to the Q&A. We're going to, oh, excuse me. 
Uh, we're going to get to the 108 trillion crypto market cap prediction first in 2024. Not market cap, but volume, that is. Uh, crypto trading volume to exceed 108 trillion in 2024, that's a lot of volume. With Europe currently in the lead, yo, that's right. Uh, global crypto trading is only just beginning to take off as a study from CoinWire predicts that the industry trading volume will exceed 108 trillion by the end of this year. The study revealed that the end of the year estimate is 90% higher than in 2022. The United States leads with the highest projected crypto trading volume for the year, surpassing $2 trillion. While the US may lead in the crypto trading volume, Europe leads the market and global crypto transaction value accounting for 37.32%. Europe is one of the most proactive regions in the world. When it comes to defining its crypto industry through regulations, these regulations are designed to help the lawmakers understand financial technology and provide traders and exchanges with clear guidelines for navigating the market. The European Union's landmark markets and crypto assets regulation came into partial effect June 30th, focusing on stablecoins. In December, additional regulations for crypto asset service providers are set to come in effect. This legislative framework, which has been in the works since uh, 2020, is the EU's first set of uniform market rules for crypto assets. The survey expects Europe's crypto trading volume to hit 40 trillion in 2024. Send it a 2.7% fold. Uh, oh, sorry, 2.7 fold increase from its 15 trillion in uh, 2022. Asia ranks second with 36% of the world's crypto transaction value. And I would speculate that the population in Asia is the largest in the world because the two biggest countries as far as population is uh, India and China. Correct me if I'm wrong. But anyways, the conclusions found in the study were made by analyzing centralized exchanges with trust scores higher than six on the CoinGecko based on web traffic by country, supported languages, headquarter locations, and trading time zones. Another finding revealed that Binance dominates in over 100 countries worldwide. That's why it's the largest crypto exchange. So with a trading volume of almost $3 trillion, uh, Binance US was also dominant in the same number of the countries, although it has a lower trading volume of just shy of $4 billion. And according to the study, this makes Binance the most widely used exchange worldwide. Well, common sense, right? The exchange celebrated its seventh anniversary and milestone of reaching 200 million users worldwide. And following Binance, we have OKX and CEX with a presence in 93 and 92 countries. Respectively, the trading volumes are roughly 800 billion and 1.8 billion. I think this volume may, oh yeah, I guess that could be right because trillions is the other. Whoa, that's a lot. And uh, Coinbase and Bybit operate in 90 and 87 countries respectively, and their trading volumes are 662 billion and 1.14 trillion dollars per before. Uh, so there you go, yo. Now for our featured story of the day. The Bitcoin price will hit $330,000 per Bitcoin this bull cycle, according to this crypto analyst. So I want to break this baby down for you, just as you can read here in the headline. Now, independent market analyst Arson remains unfazed, baby, by the recent dip of the Bitcoin price, predicting a monumental rebound to 330000 in the current bull cycle. Now, that's rebounding like Dennis Rodman in his prime. Just saying, elbows in this piece. Arsene argues that the smart money, institutional investors, market experts, and other financial professionals have accumulated the biddy during the recent correction cycle, indicating it's a long-term bullish bias for Bitcoin, uh, quoting him here. That's because the dip is nothing new, the analyst noted, while referring to the Bitcoin previous bull cycles, which occurred every four years and witnessed explosive price growth. For instance, the Bitcoin first bull cycle back in 2012. How many of you were around for the very first halving? Because if you were, you were a true OG and we should celebrate you, which lasted 800 days and saw the price rise a whopping 9,000%. Whoa. The next cycle, second halving, 2016. How many of you witnessed the second halving? Let me know. And then we had the third one in 2020. If you were there to witness it, holla, which lasted for around 800 days. And Bitcoin price surged approximately 3,000% and 1,200% respectively. So here's where we're currently at. Now, again, 800 days from the time of the halving, it's a lot of days. It's virtually, what is that, over two years? 365 days out of the year, so 700, close enough. Now, uh, quoting Arson here, notice how in every consecutive cycle, the Bitcoin returns get smaller by about 60%, as you can see right here in the chart. Now, that would imply a 450% price increase for this cycle, putting Bitcoin at roughly $330,000 per BTC. The Bitcoin price prediction, nonetheless, comes amidst the sharp correction, which we just witnessed, with Bitcoin down 23% from the all-time high of 73.8, which we established mid-March. And as of July 11th yesterday, Bitcoin traded at a subdued 50 
7,000, with recent losses led by the ongoing Mt. Gox reimbursement to clients as well as the German government's idiotic Bitcoin sell-off. Nonetheless, data from CoinShares showed institutional investors buying that mother friggin' dit B T F D for the win. And in addition, the weekly report for the on-chain analytics platform CryptoQuant noted that the Bitcoin large investors, we refer to as the whales, continue to increase their holdings on the recent price decline. And I tell you guys all the time, follow the smart money and do nothing mainstream, aka lamestream media tells you, including Kramer. Actually, I take that back. Do the opposite of what Kramer tells you, and you'll probably be sitting pretty good. Uh, quoting the experts from the report, whale holdings are growing at a 6.3% month on month. The fastest monthly pace since April 12. Increasing the whale holdings is a sign of growing Bitcoin demand. Now, how long can the Bitcoin go before resuming its bull run? Let's break it down. Bitcoin's ongoing correction is far from bottoming out, according to some analysts, but most remain convinced about the long-term bull scenario akin to Arson's $330,000 Bitcoin price target. For instance, Marcus Thielen, analyst at 10X Research, suggests the Bitcoin price will likely drop towards $50,000 in the coming weeks due to a double Double top formation sensation. Double tops are considered bearish reversal patterns as illustrated in the chart. And it shows you the Bitcoin drop to 50 Gs. And let me know if you agree with that. Or do you think that's not going to happen? Now, we also have crypto analyst Mikhail Van Apop, who holds a short-term bearish outlook for the price action as well. Now, the market analyst anticipates the Bitcoin will break below the May 1st low of 56 Gs, tapping into demand-side liquidity beneath it, ultimately falling further to around $52,800. Another market analyst, ASK32, sees a correction until October, followed by a 300% rally into 2026. Let me know your thoughts, family. Uh, personally, I think we hit... Uh, a cycle peak this year. Um, I don't know how high it's going to be, but I also believe that next year in 2025, we hit the cycle epoch peak, right? And I think we will be somewhere in the six figures. I think I'm leaning, or I'm not thinking, but I lean more towards multiple six figures. My bottom scenario for bearish is 222,000, which is clearly still bullish in all of our heads. Would you agree? And I believe we can go as high as 750,000. There's no guarantee on that, but I can see that happening because I believe in the biddy. I believe in uh, Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation. I believe in Bitcoin as perfect money. I believe as it a hedge against corrupt governments. I see it as a perfect store value. I see it as pristine collateral. I see it as immutable in which it is. I see in which it has a finite limited supply in which it does. I feel it is uh, 100 times superior to gold because it doesn't have any of the flaws of gold. It's a digital asset. The future is digital, aka virtual. So that's why it is so valuable to begin with. It's borderless. It cannot be confiscated. No one can take it away from you if it's properly self-custodied. Everyone here should be self custodying their BTC, and nobody should be trusting anyone to hold their private keys for them. That includes every mother exchange out there. That includes Binance. That includes Coinbase. That includes Gemini. That includes Kraken. That includes every mother freaking third party wallet or exchange on the mother freaking planet. Why is that? Own your own biddies. Protect your keys like Wu-Tang protecting their neck. Back in the day, protect your neck, kid. And I'll leave you with that. Let me know your insights, your feedback. When do you think we hit a cycle high? When do you think we'll hit the peak for this epoch? Do you think it'll be 2024? Do you believe it'll be 2025? Holla at your boy and welcome to the Q&A segment of the live show. Let's go. I was thinking the same, like, no way, says Jacob. Aloha, Adam. What it do? I play craps, JV. Heart eight, past the line, sixer. You, you know what I would love, K-Jam, when you visit? Let's go to the casino and you show me what you do. And uh, I'm going to take great pride in that. And we'll have some fun. I'll play some blackjack and I'll play with you. We'll do a little craps just for the hell of it. There's plenty of casinos here in Puerto Rico. There's no shortage of them. Every major resort has a, a casino and they're pretty nice actually. And you get uh, free drinks, free food. It's kind of cool. The only thing they're missing is the massage ladies. Now, when I go to the Hard Rock Casino, in Tampa, they got the massage ladies. So you can be playing your craps. You can be playing your blackjack. You'll get a massage while you're playing. It doesn't get any greater than that. That's like heavenly. <laughs> I'm in craps fan too. Hard play 10. When I think of craps, I always think of the Bronx tale. Remember little Collagero, little C, playing with Sonny, winning all the money with the gangsters? 
Classic. No more beats, bro. Disclaimer, not financial advice. This is an entertainment and opinion based motherfucking show. Boom. Ultimately, yes, 56% chance to drop 47 to 50. But this means that the final bull run can be very strong as those buyers seek 6x. Almost sounds like success. 6x success. I like that.